Oh yeah, this is my top 10 worst comedians. Now, just a reminder, there are some standards to be met. I did limit this to stand-up comedians. And of course they do other things, but maybe that's how you have to be. At some point, you're a stand-up comedian uh, as, your, as your career. That was your career. You could be on the list for being overrated. You have to uh, be overrated and then you believe it and you think you deserve it. Oh boy. George Carlin, are you listening? Because when you ask people, like stand-up comedians of a certain age, uh, who is their inspiration? Who is their hero? Uh, it's like an obligatory thing. You know, they say it like robots almost. George Carlin and Richard Pryor. It's like it's one word. George Carlin and Richard Pryor. Uh, but Carlin uh, not only thought that he deserved it, and not only thought he was very important, but he probably thought that he deserved more. But Richard Pryor maybe could have been called overrated, but I can't see where he's anything but humble about it. Pryor reminds me of another reason you could be on this list, uh, which is performance-enhancing drugs. Yeah, so Pryor is remembered as having told people after he comes out of drugs, he sobers up, he's not that good after that. He just can't be funny. Sometimes he is, sometimes he isn't. And Pryor regrets doing 40 years of drugs, he says. And he doesn't know, was it him or was it the drugs? As much as I can find on him, Richard Pryor is often very funny. And I don't think he's on drugs. Uh, he's great on talk shows. Is he on drugs? I don't know. But I would say the ones where he seems to be on drugs are worse. I think they're worse, but there's a lot of uh, dumb fucks out there who would think those are the best ones. Like probably a lot of the people that say things like, George Carlin and Richard Pryor, those are my two comedy heroes because they thought it was so cool that he was fucking bombed out of his mind saying crazy shit. And to them, that's funny. Like they think Artie Lang is funny. So anyway, Richard Pryor would not be on this list. I think Kevin Hart might be one of those algorithm products. Like uh, somebody, some team of experts has gone through the last 40 years of jokes, like by any stand-up comedians, and then they've somehow found out like which ones get the the most like mainstream moderate laughs and then somehow they reassembled those into an act and then Kevin Hart is like uh, an actor that would come out and he's got a really good like what you talking about face you know a lot of it is inflection humor it's him it's physical comedy which is not a bad thing and so he does suck because yeah he is fairly mediocre so if you ever looked at like a transcript of a kevin hard uh stand-up hour you'd be like this is you know pretty like pedestrian this is like middle of the road and really a lot of this is kind of like nothing it's just like his mom made a reaction and then he was like what the are you kidding me right now so then we have to put up with him, you know, being uh, worth about $700 billion. Him and The Rock, I guess we will look forward to another 50 or 70 movies from these two. Uh, but you know what? Kevin Hart isn't on this list because his face is pretty crazy. Like, it is a pretty funny, like, you know, startled... Uh, like he can't believe what's going on and then you should see his eyes get really big and he's like what and he's like looking up at something so uh, maybe that's why Kevin Hart didn't make it to my top 10 worst list Tommy Chong he could go on a worst list uh, Cheech and Chong in this case we're just gonna be talking about Tommy Chong uh, Cheech Marin uh, fairly funny uh, but both of them, privileged kids. Uh, privileged, I guess we could call them trust fund kids. In this case, Tommy Chong, 
Uh, he's going on here for being a dick in one of the worst ways, too. Uh, he had a fairly privileged upbringing in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And this asshole has started uh, a pretty horrible insult, actually a damning thing, against the people that raised him in his comfortable lifestyle and been calling them a racist, uh, pretending that um, he, he joined a black gang. I guess, too, he called himself uh, uh, one chink and four niggers. Okay, so anyway, that's back in the old days, right? When people were trying to be funny, they could say things like that. And, but he was not run out of town. He went to Vancouver because he wanted to make money and get famous. And because in Vancouver, his father, a fairly wealthy person, had a downtown nightclub that made money showing ladies' tits. So I don't know if he's also become a male feminist. But uh, anyway, um, Cheech and Chong, here they have something in common with George Carlin. They are doing improv, where like they get foam sticks and, and, and suggestions from the audience and carry on. And actually, they had a bunch of acts. But like Carlin, um, Carlin's hippie weatherman character was made to mock hippies. It was having a laugh at people who drugged themselves into stupidity and then couldn't do anything right. So that's what Carlin was doing with the weatherman. Then he went home, put on a hippie costume, and then pretended that's who he was. Well, Teach and Chong is something like that too. The, the owner's son and the chief of police's son, uh, they had a great time and they would do these characters, the two uh, worthless, slacking, lazy, stupefied hippies who had smoked up their soma but going on about stupid, immature things. And the audience, and the right audience, went wild for it until that's what people were waiting for, was their hippie characters, which they were not, not in real life, but they became these hippie characters. And those characters were a big seller. Uh, what else is Tommy Chung on this list for? Well, promoting uh, a drug that stupefies people. Uh, but lately, uh, he's now been promoting, uh, he's a snake oil. We replace the word snake with CBD oil. He's now a CBD oil salesman. So he's selling a worthless thing for, you know, for cash. When he was put in charge of directing Cheech and Chong movies, maybe the first one was okay. If you take a look at the ones that come later, oh boy, those are bad. And he's not funny. And another thing is, he's trying to be important. Yeah, so the trust fund kid who already had a lot of privileges uh, wanted to make money being a crazy slacker. Then when he gets to make movies, he's back to his true self, which is he wanted to be, he would go on a, an, a, a dickhead power trip and wanted to control people. And then he wanted to be important, like he was making something artistic. He wasn't really a stage comedian, so I don't think he's going on this list. He's a comic actor. Oh, this should be good. <laughs> he wasn't unfunny. He wasn't a bad stand-up comedian. He wasn't great. I guess he would be an average UK stand-up comedian. And he would come out dressed up with women's makeup, women's dress. You know, in those days, I think they called it drag. But the thing is, what people today don't know is that in 1980s UK, this was like a, this was the New York Dolls type of punk rock defiant but I, I've I've heard people have said no it was just he was dared to do it or like at a comedy festival it was just his drunk mates dared him to do it put on a makeup and go out there uh, and then what happened is this was like a rebel thing so Izzard has a somewhat successful career but I think this gets him a lot of attention like it did David Bowie and a bunch of other celebrities at the time just figured out you'd put on makeup. I don't think people could understand it today. And actually, I think you do have to be like British and you have to be from that time to really get it. 
Um, this had nothing to do with today's uh, this crazy woke thing where they have an infatuation with uh, transgendered people. So the thing is, he somehow he got some importance. Like I don't know what they were doing. This is like I think there was something daring or brave or respectful. I don't know what it was. He kept getting this. He kept getting importance attached to him and he wasn't he's he's a fairly middle of the road uk comedian his comedy is often not so bad and not so good now what happened is the uk they've you know caught especially their entertainment industry has gone just fucking insane onto this uh trannies and transgenders and they are infatuated with this and they want to take out you know rage on people that don't use a pronoun correctly so now this kid i think they were going to turn on him and then so out of fear he shows up and pretends that no he's he really is like a transgender female and he makes up whatever they want him to say about this stupid thing and now even his wikipedia page says eddie izzard she is uh and her comedy and this fucker now has to show up in a wig and a dress that serves you right you stupid lefty commie dum-dum but listen uh eddie izzard actually is one that's on here for uh over importance and he thinks he deserves it and he thinks he should be important and tell people important things when he's really just a, an average above average British comedian from the 80s and 90s. Eddie Izzard, you probably could go on this list, but I think you're suffering and en- suffering enough. <laughs> go put on some panties and go tell people you're a woman, you idiot. Speaking of fake gays, uh, here's one that probably could be on this list uh, because for some reason this person was allowed to happen and get popular. Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, So what do we have here? We've got a gimmick act and a hack put together. So what happened is he was doing an impersonation of Paul Lind. He's going around doing stage shows in which he's pretending that he's so accomplished that he's now like the, you know, like the show, The Apprentice, like that he's a veteran stand-up comedian and they're going to have on amateurs who will try to make Tony laugh. And they call it Kill Tony, which is stupid anyway. I don't know what that's... He's trying to, what, Kill Bill? You're trying to do... A, you're a Tarantino... What? None of that makes sense. And why are you pretending to be a vet? You're a Paul Lind impersonator. Is Tony Hinchcliffe super funny? Oh, no, he isn't. He is a dud. He is awful. Uh, but what happened is, for some reason, this uh, doing the Paul Lynn uh, gay... Paul Lynn, by the way, was not a homosexual. He was doing a parody of a homosexual. I'm sorry to tell people that if you, in case you did think he was gay. Well, neither is Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, so for some reason, though, this gay voice thing, he's not a roast master. He just says mean shit in this super faggy gay voice by the way are you dressing like paul lind uh got far too overrated wow not good anyway tony hinchcliffe you should just retire now latest news somebody's telling me he got me tooed Actually, I don't know why Tony Hinchcliffe isn't on this top 10 worst comedians list. 